Hello there everybody thanks for tuning in to another video here on Armor of God. If you find the messages in this or any other video in this channel helpful, please do share it on your Facebook or Twitter to help spread the message. So this time we'll be discussing about curses and what we should do when someone places a curse on us or our families. Now there will be those who think that curses aren't real. That's up to you. Perhaps some of you who have had personal experiences with these things can share their own experience in the comments down below. It will be helpful for the rest to know as well. Anyway, in the case where you or your family have been placed under curses by someone who hold grudge against you or hates you, let's hear what Father Vincent Lampert told us to do. I believe that curses are powerful and effective to the degree that maybe we're not as strong in our faith because we can't control what somebody else does. They could wish us ill will, we can't control that. But again, if we are going back to Paul's letter to the Ephesians, if we're putting on the armor of Christ, if we're putting ourselves under the protective care of God, then if somebody is placing a curse against us, it will have no effect whatsoever. I will say when I work with people who believe that a family member has been involved in witchcraft and has brought some type of curse or malady upon the family. It's very powerful for the priest to pray over the person and to specifically say, as a priest of Jesus Christ, I hereby declare null and void any curses, spells, and taxes that have been placed upon you. Because again, the sacrament of holy orders does mean something. And if a priest has taken his priesthood seriously, and recognizes the power and the authority of the office that he's been given as priest, then that will break all of that. So I always encourage people that believe that somehow a curse has been placed upon them or within the family is to have the priest, their priest pray over them and say very specifically, as a priest of Jesus Christ, I hereby declare all of this null and void. And then after that, the person really needs to make sure that they're living out their faith. The Catholic, they're going to Mass, they're praying, and they're celebrating the sacraments. We think of, a, I believe it's in chapter 11 of Luke's Gospel. You know, once the demon has been cast out, it goes and wanders through the arid wasteland and coming back and finding the house wet clean, meaning it's gone, but God hasn't been invited in. Then it goes and finds seven other demons worse than itself, and they come back and take up residence in the person and their condition is worse than it was before. So it's not just a matter of breaking the presence of evil, the curses, the spells, casting out the demon through exorcism. Inviting God in is a very integral part of exorcism and deliverance ministry.